It's like Rogan got high and asked his buddies, how can we annoy people this time? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Most people near us were asleep 30 minutes into the film. Really? Okay. That's almost impossible. Yeah. I'm so glad my seven-year-old was bored, too, so we could leave halfway. Uh, well, th- th- well, how can you even review it? <laughs> yeah, that's not fair at all. I mean, he went on IMD- IMDb.com and just uh, typed it in. They really need to vet this better. I, <laughs> I don't think that's how the internet works. That is a one-star review from IMDb. Hello and welcome, everybody. We are Spoilers Intended, a podcast about series and films. I'm Steven, joined as always by Andrew. Cowabunga, dude. And Ryan. Cowabunga. You can't do the same thing. That's against I did. the rules. I just did. He did. Throw he broke out. the rules. Just throw him it. out. He, he's had his peer review. I'm a, I'm a, I was like, before the show, teenager, I just had my you. rebellious face. Yeah. It's us. So I'll say, before the show, yes, it's you. We, were, we were talking about Ryan's been on now for more than a year. Yep. Bow, 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 bow. He did the thing. He did. He's out of the probationary period. We had yeah. the peer review, and you just failed it, right? Yeah, there. just simple right. rules. <laughs> <laughs> Not improving your case right now either. How's my soundboard work? <laughs> Let's grade that. Uh, so this week we are talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Mutant Mayhem. Yep. The latest yeah. of the TMNT franchise reboot. <laughs> I don't like <laughs> TMNT like, well, entries, entries into the TMNT yeah, franchise. Because I mean, there, there's like about a reboot every two or three can't years. Call it a universe. It's not cohesive. Like no, that, not at no. all. Yeah. But before we get into that, because we are riffing on the fact that there has been a lot of turtle material over time, there really has. We're going to talk about a little bit of turtles nostalgia. What uh, we all grew up with it as kids. Yeah. You know, if you were born in 2000, you also grew up with it as kids. Mm-hmm. If you were born in 2010, you also grew up with it as kids. So let's <laughs> yeah. talk some nostalgia. What do y'all got, guys? Uh, before it gets stolen from me, I'm just going to go ahead and take it. Super Nintendo. There it is. Turtles in Time. Turtles didn't, in didn't Time. didn't steal anything. You're fine. <laughs> so I, obviously this is based off of the original arcade game that yes. came out in the 80s. Fantastic team fighter Four brawler. Player, yeah. Let's go. Uh, but this, I love Turtles in Time because you do get like some of the time travel aspects in it, and I think they improved a little bit on some of the gameplay, and you get like, um, yeah, just a, a little bit more I elaboration. I don't know with if the it formula. was easier or what, or if it was just the fact that the SNES didn't also take my quarter every time I died. <laughs> that, but yeah, it was well, definitely easy. Well, Look at it both, felt, maybe. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but both. the music was really good. Yes, I yes. really love a lot of the, um, like, the, there's because there's a lot of um, uh, variations on, like, like good little enemy archetypes and that kind of yeah, stuff yeah, that you yeah, got yeah. in it. Well, it's a very really classic fun. Street Brawler style mm-hmm. game. But they the, did a good job with like different foot soldiers were different colors and yeah. like that like this is the guy that throws the sewer the manhole yeah. cover at you or yeah, yeah. yeah. alley cat blues three a.m. three p.m. three p.m. <laughs> three a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man! But yeah, and that's the one where whenever you there's a level where you're like in the sewers and you hit these little like spike things and then your um, your turtles go my toe my toe uh-huh. my toe yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, shell shocked. But so me and my friend John. When I would, he he had the Super Nintendo. I didn't, and <laughs> you were that special. I would basically go over to his house pretty much every weekend, and yeah. this was the only game that we played for uh, probably like a year. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, so like that's a rite of passage as a kid where your parents are like, "Why are you always going over to like John's house?" And it's like, "Well, because he's got you know this console or this game, right?" Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah. I, I feel like that was such a common thing growing up. I we made the mistake one time. Of, making the joke when my mom asked us that it was because he's got all the drugs. I didn't go over real well. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're never going over there yeah, again. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, it was not like that for, for us, but... You know. No drugs with your teenage no, mutant ninja turtle? No, so. <laughs> does, does Mountain Dew not count? Come on now. No, I mean, I, I remember, like, I never owned that game mm-hmm. because it was like, again, this is a different era. Like, yeah. Games were expensive. You got like, for me at least, it was like two a year, birthday yeah. and Christmas, and then if you're lucky enough to save up money, well, you and, might could get. And this was one. before they were regulated to where they were. Oh, they uh, game anything. companies oh, yeah. were forced to actually like set a price. Right. Yeah. So it was all <laughs> over the place. You get like a Garfield Sega Genesis game for like eighty bucks. Oh yeah. No, I, I bought <laughs> Donkey so Kong Country. It must be good, right? Oh, yeah. Cool. Donkey Kong Country for eighty nine dollars. Oh. I'll never forget that because as a child, Ooh. it was my life savings. <laughs> I mean, at least Donkey Kong Country is a good game. Oh, it ruled, but it yeah. still gutted me to like put all my money up there and they're like you have nothing left here's the game <laughs> um 
Yeah, but this one, I, I remember we rented it all the time. Like, that was one that every time we go to the video store, I'd be like, I mean, what are we doing? Why are we trying to choose? Let's just get turtles. Yeah, yeah. it's just a Friday night. You got to yeah. get the See, thing is, you got to get there before it got rented out because right. Blockbuster only had two copies. Yeah. So, the the biggest limitation could you couldn't play four players. No, so the Super Nintendo only had, only had two. They only had two, but I vaguely they remember had the, they had like a splitter. They had a multi You had to be like rich yeah. to have the splitter and two other controllers. But I, I don't know if the game actually supported four players. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, there I don't weren't know. a whole lot of games that did just yeah. because you had to buy another mm, peripheral like, yeah, to go peripheral, with it. Yeah. So like the percentage well, of the pie like, of people that have it. Not just that. You also had to buy two more controllers. Right, yeah. There's a lot of money in that. So a friend of mine had it, the splitter or whatever. We would use to play... Oh, what was the football game on Super Nintendo? I think it was one of the John Maddens, like the early ones. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but like, yeah, we would. I would just bring my two controllers over mm-hmm. to his house where he had mm-hmm. two controllers. You know, so he had the splitter, but not four controllers. Yeah. You know, so it was like he required people to bring your own <laughs> controllers when B-O- you came over. BYOC. Yeah. BYOC. Yeah. yeah, I do remember. So I don't think it was that game. I think it was the NES game where you had like the above world like. Almost like mini map yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah, was yeah. no mini map. So this was a linear arcade style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's none of that in Turtles. So there was. Uh, I remember there was like for the NES Turtles game. Mm-hmm. Uh, you there was like one little jumping spot to where it looks like you actually had to jump. But you didn't. But you didn't. You yeah. could literally just walk right across it. Yeah. But yeah. every time you jumped, you just fall right through and you have to it, go through the it would, whole. It would like, like miss again. time the the spacing. Yep. If you yeah. jump, you had if to you walk. <laughs> well, also like in the little uh, like street level stuff because it was kind of like top down, right? Yeah, yeah. There was the stupid little Foot Clan van, and if you like walk out the street, it just run you over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, I hated that thing so the, much. That one I have vivid angry memories of the underwater <laughs> level where you're oh, detonating the bombs. Oh, yeah, you're trying yeah, to, yeah. The music, the music is like, yes, gonna kill you all. Like your blood pressure as I, an eight year old is through the roof. So as a kid, we would, all of us, me, my cousins, John and Corey, and my cousin, Dwayne, we all had this game and we all mm-hmm. had NESs, right? And it was like one of the only games that we all had. Cause otherwise it's like, you're saying yeah. like, I would go over here and play battle toads at Dwayne's house. I'd go over here and play, you know, Madden yeah. over at John and Corey's house. They'd come to my house and they'd play, you know, uh, freaking Mario Kart. Yeah, well, yeah, like yeah. they didn't have Mario Kart. I had Mario, you know, like, mm-hmm. so it was like, we had the different, you know, yeah. stuff. But uh, we all had that Turtles game, mm-hmm. and none of us could get past that water level. And when we would go oh, to, like, so my grandmother's house or we would meet up at a house <laughs> at all try. There, we would just go round and round. And we spent one night, I'm talking, we probably stayed up till 3 a.m. till they made us, like, go to bed, mm-hmm. trying and trying and trying. And I think we eventually got past it. And But, you know, back then, if you, if you, you die continues, immediately yeah. after it. Because it's like you get on top of the, the dam that you're trying to, like, save. Yeah. And it's, like, hard as all get out. And you have no lives. Like two slices like no of health. health. Yeah. 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 But uh he my cousin Dwayne recently, like just out of nowhere, at like eleven o'clock on a Tuesday, just sent me a YouTube link and I clicked on it and it's just that music. Oh. And I was like, oh and I texted oh. back, I was like, this is I I, I understand just PTSD, what, like, yeah. like flashes of war. Now I back. understand what like, you know, trauma is. Like because <laughs> I got hives, I started sweating, I was like, no. Like it took me back immediately. <laughs> Which it's funny, right? Because that was a whole trend in maybe late 80s, early 90s of like, hey, look, this is going to be intense underwater. But I uh, remember the, like, Mar- the Super Mario oh, yeah. underwater. All the underwater but parts. But see, I remember uh, like Game Boy Mario, the underwater. It was like a wall. It was like, doo, doo. Oh, yeah. It was just super easy, like yeah. relaxing, and you're still just dying left well, yeah, and right. So, so the one on Game Boy was actually pretty relatively easy. Super Mario Land. Yeah. I, yeah. Think, yeah. Well, I think at that yeah. point, maybe we were just older. <laughs> yeah, but possibly, yeah. yeah. More competent individuals. Well, you like... Yeah, I, you guys are a little bit older than I am, so a little bit. Yeah, yeah, there's we a, are. There's a bit of very a, much so. Bit wow, of age gap. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just grew gray hair. So that's what makes me cough. As we were discussing this, all right. Well, what about you guys? I'm gonna jump in. Go for it. Mine was a very specific toy that I don't know if anyone else even had this one. Technodrome. It was the TMNT pizza thrower. Do you I remember know the pizza about. thrower? You I remember that thing? About. Yeah. So it was a, a like a. So this isn't the van that no, no, no. shot no, no. the. No, it's like a it's like a disc shooter. It's like a disc okay. shooter thing. Yeah. I'll pull up a picture here for you, not the listeners at home. <laughs> I'll describe <laughs> Look it up it. on your own. So Google. it's like Google a green yep. like oh, yeah, they sit uh, in it. van, yeah. and so it's got like this. No, this seat. Was, this is what I was talking about. I said the van. Like this is like it has like little wheels and stuff. But it's not the turtle van. No, it's not the turtle van. But it yeah. But it's got so it's got four wheels and it's got like a tank almost top. Yeah. It could rotate and well, then you had you these put, pizzas. You could put one turtle in there. Yeah, one turtle wrote, and you could put these like plastic disc shaped pizzas mm-hmm. in the like the top of it had like almost a manhole cover looking thing. And on the side there was a button. It took like 
I want to say it was like 4D batteries or something. It was like an oh, insane, insane amount of power. <laughs> that thing was a brick. Like this was a basically a, like a small like chainsaw motor inside of a <laughs> children's <was> toy. <laughs> yeah. But the really loud. hours I would spend like just loading the pizzas in there and like setting up like, I mean, Ninja Turtles, He-Man action figures, mm-hmm. Ghostbusters action figures, G.I. Oh, Joe's, yeah, anything Cobra, I had. I like Cobra Commander got put up oh, there. Yeah. It would just be in a row, and I would just like firing squad, da-da, da-da. and I would try to see how far away in my bedroom can you I get with these uh-huh. yeah. You're judging like the, the fall distance of these pizzas, <laughs> you know, and like at wind speed. I'm like checking everything. And th- this one especially, the only reason I ever stopped playing with it is I ended up eventually losing every single, single. one oh, of the pizzas. Yeah, yeah I, I also lost every pizza. Yeah, and I, I'm sure, like, our original house, you know, if, if someone was to, like, tear it down, they'd pull up the rubble, and there'd just be a big pile of these plastic pizzas <laughs> somewhere <laughs> in the rubble like, because... Demoing, they're removing drywall, they just find a pizza, like, how did this Yeah, get what is this? <laughs> yeah, so that, that's mine. That, that's I had so many Ninja Turtles toys, and I was trying to, like, narrow it down to mm-hmm. one that, like... You know, because everybody has, like, the different. I had the Detective Don, where he has like the trench coat. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I had yeah, the yeah. Uh, metal head, or, uh-huh. where, where he had like the, the metal robot turtle. Mm-hmm. I had a bunch of bunch of the like. It was crazy as a kid for me at least because we the only place that I had really where we could buy toys in the small town is Walmart. Yeah, of course. and they would always get like just ra- like I never got an Optimus Ransacked. Prime. Yeah. you know, ever. Like I always wanted Optimus Prime as a transformer. Never got him. You know, you get other stuff. A GoBot. What is this? You know, <laughs> the same thing with Ninja Turtles. They never had like a lot of the original. They, they didn't have like four Shredder. Right. They had the they had like super classic Ultra Battle Shredder. Yeah. With all the it, random crap, and he's not really purple. He's like pink for some yeah. reason. So I had. Yeah. I remember I had. I think the original Michelangelo, Donatello, and I think Raphael. But I never got Leo. I never could find. Leonardo. So, so the the only turtle action figure that I had mm-hmm. was Leo. Oh, I, if I had just known. I know. You just, just I, I was five years older than you. I could have <laughs> punched you and taken your toys. Yeah, like, I'm the, I'm God, playing you were that school. guy. I, I could have been that guy easily. <laughs> Yeah, but that that was my mine was that turtle the the pizza thrower because it was like just yeah. such a weird. It, I don't even know if they had that in the show. I think it was just a no, sole no, creation no, for no, the toy. No, you know, it was like, not yeah, something in the show. Yeah, but that was a blast. Steven, what's your? What's All your right, well, I got my mine was in the show, and by the show I mean the cartoon van. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, it's not the van. Uh-huh. I don't think I ever had the van. Actually, I think uh, I never. I had, had, a, I had a friend that had. I had the a van. friend that had the van. Yeah, everybody no. had a friend that had the van. <laughs> It's really? like everyone had everyone had a friend that had the um, the USS flag, the GI oh, Joe, the G. Joe yeah. carrier. Yeah, my, was, my cousin Dwayne had it. I never yeah. got it. I was a kid who lived like right like a street over from me who had it. <laughs> but see, I had his whole bedroom, yeah. like the length of his freaking bed is ridiculous. I had Castle Grayskull and the Ghostbusters house, and nobody else ever had that. And I was like, ha ha, <laughs> I, mean, I, I have a thing. Yeah, I didn't come close to that. So what I had mm-hmm. is 1988's Turtle Blimp. Oh, oh, you had yeah, the blimp. The blimp. I had the blimp, baby. Oh, oh, man, the blimp's so cool. Blimp was, it would have been a lot cooler if it actually floated. Oh, yeah, because it was probably just hard plastic, <laughs> wasn't it? Oh, well, no, no. I mean, that was a, you blew that up. With, you yeah. sat there and you know, had the little... Yeah, like it, uh, could, could, it could you inflate ball. it with helium? <laughs> well, I mean, it was like a beach ball uh, valve, that, so I doubt it would have held. That was not the question. I doubt it would have held. <laughs> I wanted to. Let me tell you, as a kid, there was nothing as more. As a six-year-old kid, he should have gone over <laughs> to... Purchase the canister of helium. <laughs> Let me get one of your finest canisters of helium, sir. <laughs> Here's but my allowance. I I can like I vividly remember loading this thing. So I remember the commercial for that thing. Uh, but my oh. so my sister was a huge Donatello fan. Yeah. So in order to keep the peace, I did not own any Donatello. Wow. Wow. My, my sister owned the Donatello. Oh, okay. So. I can vividly remember loading this thing up with the other three turtles yeah. and flying it, a.k.a. carrying it down the hall, yeah. to go pick up Donatello. And just depending on what kind of mood my sister was in, either Donatello got to ride the blimp that day or he didn't. Wow. <laughs> He he was just he just happened to be working on some some new tech. Too, yeah, well, yeah, too that's, busy. That's totally not what she said. But yeah. you know, <laughs> get out yeah. of my room, that, you kid. That was my head much, cannon yeah. for what was happening. <laughs> yeah, there, so there, yeah, there's a five year difference between my sister and I. So you know, when I'm like cruising around at five and six and seven, I'm I'm pretty lame. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, my sister's ready to be a teenager. Yep, she's got the signs on her door or whatever. I mean, uh, in all defense, she probably thinks you're pretty lame now too. So yeah, probably, but probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have no uh, idea about your relationship with your sister. I, just, <laughs> I mean, it's actually pretty good. Yeah. Okay, cool. But, but yeah, no. Uh, she thinks I'm cool. Leave me alone. Yeah. Gosh. 
I finally have, have her approval. <laughs> oh, well, see, of course, Andrew, as a, an only child, didn't grow up with this moment. I did oh. not have any of that Andrew's kind like, of interaction. How do you pronounce it? Cybling? Cybling? <laughs> but, huh. but, like, back in the day, right, uh, AIM, AOL Instant Messenger, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, chatting with my friends. And my nice. sister, of course, is nosy. I'll get out. She's over my shoulder reading the conversation. She's like, huh. Y'all actually have like real conversations. <laughs> like, did you not think I was a person? Like, what? <laughs> I'm like 14 or 15 at this you point. You do have what? a brain. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, y'all are all idiots. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm talking about war and peace with my literature friends on AIM. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's a little, little slice of some uh, some turtle nostalgia. I want to I want to hear from the listeners. What was your turtle piece? What was your turtle? Yeah, what, yeah. What? Um, I what did you grow up with? I want to know that. what's that memory? That yeah. birthday present? You know, grandma came mm-hmm. through, or you found it in the toy toy aisle, or I mean, even you get a little older, like when you know it it, it swings back around. I go through cycles, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So when I was in college, you could find like good looking original turtle figures, mm-hmm. you know, updated articulations and stuff. So I mean, my yeah. my first car had a. Uh, just Raph with, he had suction cups, but only one of them worked. So he's just hanging on the back windshield <laughs> with a sign in one hand and a, and a yeah. suction cup in the other for, I don't know, like two years. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like, like turtles does kind of get like revitalization. It's very cyclical. Like every, you know, every couple of years or whatever, there's a new version of it, yeah. new cartoon, new movie, whatever. There was like the CG cartoon on Nickelodeon from mm-hmm. like, what, 10 years ago? Or yeah, about like 2012. That. And yeah. well, so now, like back in 2018, they came out with a new one that's all hand drawn animation oh, called really? Rise of TMNT. Yep. And oh, cool. it's on Netflix. I'm not going to lie, it is mm-hmm. phenomenal. Really? I haven't watched yes. that one. So, I'll like, if you're familiar with kind of, like, the reboot that they did with DuckTales for Disney, yeah, it has fantastic. that same level of quality Ooh. with the comedy, yeah. with the animation, the action's really it's, good. It's people who grew up with it, yeah. they get it, right? Yeah, and, it, yeah. like, and this is actually, I think, there's a good segue into Mutant Mayhem because this is definitely the generation, like, as we're getting older, yeah. the people that are our age are the showrunners now. Right. And they're the writers. They're the ones that are calling the shots for these kind of shows well, I mean, and movies. We, we all know Seth Rogen is a permanent man shot. Yeah, sure. Like his own words. And and with that, like, you really get these great adaptations of, like, yeah. what you think, like, like what I want wanted as a kid and what, what I want yeah. now out of, like, the same thing that I'm nostalgic for. Right, right, right. Where Rise honestly really scratches that itch. Okay, I'll and, check that and, and out. I, when I say the animation is really good, this is coming from a very big, hardcore <laughs> super, hand animation super fan. Nitpicky Total about weeb. Yeah. Yes, one hundred percent. And the like, worst. I have been incredibly impressed. Good. All right. Well, now I got to awesome. ask you the most important question for watching that show, Andrew. Obo. Subs or dubs? <laughs> I, it's, I, think it's, I think it's just for an American show. What would it be? He, he got bootleg Japanese, Japanese dubs. <laughs> I play it on my, <laughs> my phone while I watch it. Well, and, and I'll say this, too, and I think I've said it on the on the cast before, but regardless of whether you watch subs or dubs, it is important that you are just watching the show. You should get that on a T-shirt. You say it so much. Yeah. <laughs> on, honestly, or like bumper sticker, put it on your car. Oh, Andrew, oh. a bumper sticker on your car. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Really help that resale. Value. Whether it's subs or dubs. It's as long as you're watching as as it, you're it's watching. okay. Well, it would be interesting, though, to see like, a, a non-English language version of some of those shows. Well, so I'll definitely say this. Um, if you can find it, mm-hmm. the Japanese version of of Into the Spider-Verse and Across the Spider-Verse mm-hmm. for like the Japanese dubbing is bonkers good. Really? Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I, what, really what I was thinking of was like back the you know late 80s, early 90s mm-hmm. Turtles cartoon. Oh, yeah. Uh, when that released in like, not that it's really a, a dub or whatever, mm-hmm. but released in Britain. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they were not called Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> they were Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles because Ninja was too dangerous for children. Oh. Oh. C- the UK. I want to dump some right? tea in a river. I'm so mad. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, uh, a friend of mine, Marcella, she's from Mexico City, grew up in you know Mexico, and she always had the dubbed versions of like mm-hmm. all these shows and like mm-hmm. Dragon Ball Z even and stuff. Yeah. So when she would see a clip of it here, it's just, it doesn't work. She's like, this feels off because I'm used to hearing. The, yeah. The, well, no, the I mean, that's original. A, yeah. Quotes, Spanish. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Although I've heard some like Dragon Ball Z clips in Spanish and that's, it's pretty hype. I'm not oh yeah. Lie. Yeah. Like, they <laughs> get into it's it. It's good. Yeah. Okay. So anyways, back to the plot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's, let's talk about mutant mayhem here. So let's this uh, just came out released in August of 2023. We are recording this after opening weekend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, so quick synopsis here. The film follows the Turtle Brothers as they work to earn the love of New York City while facing down an army of mutants. That's yeah, pretty accurate. That's pretty, yeah. pretty accurate. All right, so I'm going to butcher some names real quick here. That's so a summary of almost every episode of the cartoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, every much. Ninja Turtle we'll story, really. <laughs> su- sub out mutants for an army of Foot Clan and Shrek. Yeah. He, one of the yeah. two. Yeah. One of the two. That's all it is. Yep. Maybe Krang. You can put Krang in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so starring Micah Abbey, Sharon Brown. That's Shaman. Why did you correct? I hate Apple. Uh, <laughs> Auto correct. Get out of here. Yeah, it gets me every day. It tried to change Rogan's name to Rosen. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> Not any better. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's uh, Shaman Shaman Brown Jr. If someone wants to double Shaman, check that, uh, I'll, I'll look it up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nicholas Cantu. Which that one, the U at the end, it like corrected me and it put an accent over it. It's like, Get out of here! <laughs> uh, I saw that one happen live. Uh, Brady Noon, Jackie Chan. Oh, I'm going to ruin this name. Probably, probably Shimon Brown Jr. I think it was Shimon. Yeah. Well, it, it changed it to Sharon. I was like, well, I know that's not right. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jackie Chan and then um, Ayo Edabiri. Yes. I'm not sure on that one. Uh, Ice Cube, I can nail that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Maya Rudolph, John Cena, and Seth Rogen, along with uh, several others. Paul yeah, Rudd. Paul Rudd, Rose Post Malone's in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot. Uh, f- uh, what's his name? Uh, he- Giancarlo Esposito? No, 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 no. This is not, not that cool or relevant. Uh, he's... Uh, He's Mr. Beast. He has a really dumb name, though, for his actual name. It's like Jimmy something or other. Oh, uh, who knows? But big YouTube personality. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's just one of the random, like, passerbys or whatever. I saw that just scrolling through the cast. Yeah. Uh, so this is directed by Jeff Rowe, who, if you're not familiar with, uh, he directed the Mis- Mitchells versus the Machines. Great movie. Yeah. Really yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, he was also a writer for Gravity Falls. Oh, well, it, it does kind of show that here with fits. some of the comedy. That works, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. that that flows through. I saw that, and I was like, oh, okay, all right, yeah. I can see it. It's all it. coming together. Yeah. And uh, also uh, co-credited director Kyler Spears, who has, at least for IMDb's purposes, they, they put that on there. I don't know if that's a true. Mm-hmm. Uh, directed, uh, and I've never heard of the show, directed 20 episodes of Amphibia. Nah, it looked kind of cool, actually, looking at little bits of it. <laughs> it's like a kid's show. You know, it's like a, like a Y7 kind yeah. of show, like a kid's show, where like a kid gets transported to a world of just where everything's just amphibian. So an isekai. Kind of, yes. <laughs> I don't know. It looked kind of neat. Uh, anyways. <laughs> kind of. I don't know. Well, I didn't like sit down and yeah. watch like four episodes or something. But anyways, yeah. uh, music by Trent Reznor. What? <laughs> and Atticus Ross. And, and Atticus Ross. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Trent Reznor, uh, Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. yeah. And then Atticus Ross, uh, best known probably for composing Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Yeah, yeah their, their soundtrack on that was it's good. Got, it's got it's other funny credits that, that Trent Reznor's on it because it really does, like, a lot of his styling does come through yeah. with this film. Well, him and Atticus Ross have done collaborations on a couple Oh, interesting. Of I didn't yeah, realize A bunch that. of stuff. And, like, they're, when they get together, it's usually really good. I think the yeah. Social Network. Social Network is, mm-hmm. is, I know yeah. Atticus Ross is credited for that. I didn't, like, look too hard. Yeah. I saw Trent Reznor's like, well, Nine Inch Nails. I'm not going to put anything else. It's just Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> right. That's all I need to know. Uh, so this was produced on a budget of seventy million dollars. Ooh, really? Right. That's actually way cheaper than I was so, expecting. Yeah. So yeah. I'm pretty sure, and I couldn't find. I kind of looked around some for trivia, but I'm pretty sure this movie was made post any COVID restrictions really existing. Oh, because uh, yeah, I guess that's, it's, that's about enough time. Yes. Well, well. Also, I don't think the turnaround on this was really long or mm-hmm. drawn out. So Seth Rogen announced the the teenage cast members of the Turtles mm-hmm. at like the Nickelodeon Kids Choice Awards in 2023. Okay. So that's not that was like the beginning of the year. That's yeah, not that so, long. Yeah. Ago. So probably so about I, a year and a half. Yeah. Well, I mean I, the the media cycle on this one's pretty short because like yeah. I don't remember hearing about it until this year. Until it was being just like, ready to go. Right. It's coming out this year. Yeah, yeah. Being like yeah. So I feel like they they probably benefited from maybe doing work here mid. 22, mm-hmm. early 22, when restrictions were less or yeah. not ex- non-existent. Uh, so opening box office was 51 million global. Oh, that's, that's actually that's pretty not, good. That's not bad. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, 43 million of that is domestic. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, Cle- clearly um, popular over here in well, the U.S. Well, hot in America. That's, that's a factor, but also... It's only as of that this opening weekend, right? Mm-hmm. It had only released in thirty percent of the planned international territories. Oh wow! So it's okay. got it's got some it's got legs. Got some on re- it, yeah. Well, this is kind of like uh, Super Mario Brothers, right? It went like a month without releasing in Japan, which uh, that's actually pretty common. It is. It's just also when people talk, oh, it like exploded at the box office. It's like, yeah, but it's like missing one of its most popular countries, yeah. right? You know, yeah. I don't know uh, how popular it is over how how, how well yeah. TMNT translates across. <laughs> Uh, the continents or mm-hmm. whatever across the oceans. Well, it, it does seem very topical to like New York. 
hey, I'm walking uh, here. The thing yeah. is, you know, like if you go it, basically anywhere else in the world, you're like, well, describe America. Well, you're going to hear about New York, L.A., Chicago and Texas. That is true. And yeah. that's, that's basically America. Right? And, and Alabama. Wow. <laughs> well, they'll, they'll play Sweet Home Alabama for you. Probably sure. not for the right reasons. Pro- definitely Ooh, not. No, right never. <laughs> never, never, never. All right, well, uh, let's hear some opinions here. Some spoiler-free Yeah. You guys, okay, you guys are looking at me, so I'll start. Always. I just default, okay? I know. I do, too. I got a crick in my neck. It just turns to the left. <laughs> uh, I, I thought this was actually pretty fantastic. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of fun. The comedy was there. The art style was... Uh, pretty cool. I liked yeah. the a lot of the like. I'll say not. Yeah, I guess just the general style, not the styling of the characters and stuff, but like the mm-hmm. actual like art style of like the way things just kind of looked as oh, like the, a painterly style. The art style was really well done. Yeah, Almost kind like of a like sketchbook a sketchbook sometimes. Yeah, kind of like a sketchbook yeah. or like an oil painting. It's got, got some yeah. scritchiness to it. Yeah, it, scritchiness. Yeah. That's the word. Scritchy. Well, and like this definitely what is a film that benefits a lot from Spider-Verse basically coming before it. They, they credit yeah. this yeah. As, yeah. as an inspiration, which also, I was thinking about this midway through the film, right? So I know Andrew, this is Andrew's wheelhouse. I'm not sure about Ryan, mm-hmm. uh, but like Ed, Ed, Nettie mm-hmm. and Cow and Chicken, you were, when Cartoon Network yeah. went through the shaky animation, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it mm-hmm. has some of that. It does. Without being as nauseating mm-hmm. as Ed, yeah. Ed, Nettie could be. <laughs> so the the thing that, you know, and uh, things are wiggling all the time. Ah, Why? Just, <laughs> sit, just stand still. You're like vibrating. <laughs> so the, the one thing that I wasn't expecting, which I guess guess it's my fault for expect expecting not this was that there's a lot more of not gross out mm-hmm. but like it definitely has much more of like the nickelodeon edge that i remember from like the 90s where like do you oh, remember yeah. like all real monsters or, or like you're gonna get slime yeah, yeah like those yeah, yeah. kind of like that kind of vibe it does which, yeah w- like watching it i was like oh the, okay cool like all the humans look grotesque got it yes. yeah yeah like yes. so that yeah, like yeah. that's kind of What's, where it's like watching um Rugrats. Yeah. Where you're just like, there's no attractive person on this screen ever. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, like, going into it, I was expecting something else, and then I got there, and I was like, oh, okay, well, I'm, like, watching old Nickelodeon. Very, which it's got a vibe. Yeah. 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 Which, yeah. and that, I don't think that's a bad thing. I it's just, just not think, what you expected. Yeah, it's just kind yeah. of not what I was expecting yeah. out of it. But the, I, I really liked, I'm going to say, like, the message of, like, kind of the whole plot of it. The mm-hmm. plot of the whole thing is fine. Yeah. I mean, it is ultimately a, a PG a kid, rated yeah. kids movie. Like yeah. they want to yeah. bring kids in for this. So, uh, you know, you all like, I guess coming in from it, from the critical perspective, you know, you always want a little bit more out of the story. Sure. But I thought it was fine. And the, but the comedy is really what kind of kept it going. Yeah. And like, like I said, kind of a minute ago, the, you can definitely tell that people our age are writing a lot of like the jokes and kind of like the delivery of how this stuff needs to be done. Yeah. See, and it, it really like some of the, some of the comedy really vibes with me. Mm. So like, I'm all for it. Yeah. So you said comedy, right? That's a C word. And I'm thinking a different C word here. Gross. Chemistry. Chemi- well, oh. so the yeah, chemistry. I was, I was gonna say the the four tur- yeah, four the main core, turtles, the core turtle chemistry, yeah. killed it. Phenomenal. Yeah. I got some trivia on that when mm-hmm. we get. Uh, I'm gonna save it. Well, and and this is probably but, the big thing. So, like, I was just talking about Rise, right? Uh-huh. The all of the voice actors from Rise are voice actors that are professionals that have been in the industry for a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They had like, and they they do a fantastic job. Yeah, but it's really cool seeing this new film actually have teenage actors yeah. be this is, the characters. This is right. the first time yeah. Yeah. that the four turtles have been voiced by actual teenagers. Which, which I think is phenomenal. There's a, there's a caveat on that, that at the time of release, not all of them are still teenagers. Uh, yeah, like, sure. But upon recording, they were. recording yes. Yes. Is, is a little bit too old now. But like uh, Micah Abbey, who played Donatello, I know whenever like people saw the trailer, they said he was too childish. And I'm like, no, like that's, like, no. and they're, they're te- supposed, supposed to be, be they're teenagers. teenagers. Yeah. Like this is what they're supposed to be. Also, when you see an actual fifteen-year-old, at least for me, being an old man, <laughs> they're children. I'm like, this is a baby that is like, you are, who who let you out of the house, dude? How I watch. <laughs> I I go to the grocery store, right? And there's just some kid walking in the parking lot. I'm like, man, like. Did like a mom lose their child and the yeah. child like pulls out their keys, gets in a car, drives away with yeah. like their They've got their learner's permit. You're like, what? No, no, they're like oh, 19. You're they're going to college. And I'm like, oh, you're like 12, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh. yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Anyways, um, continue because, like, yeah, I, I thought yeah. it was great. I thought I, it was so a I, lot of fun. I, I, I liked it a lot. I think the uh, the performances, especially like you say, of like the main four turtles, is fantastic. Oh, their interactions mm-hmm. are great. Um, I, I love the animation, the art style, and the 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 look of it. And mm-hmm. again, like you said, you know, ever since Spider Verse kind of happened, and, and even Mitchell's versus the Machines had like a lot of like interesting like painterly style. stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm glad we're getting into that era where like not everything just looks like a Pixar ripoff and not everything yeah. looks like the Incredibles or, you know, mm-hmm. like that right. plasticky, yeah. you know, well, like, like smooth. And I, I think, that, I mean, rubber. like it's yeah. like clearly yeah. we may be actually hitting like, I'll say a renaissance of CGI animation now yeah. to where we have these like now bigger studios are like, oh yeah, this did really well. Yeah. Go ahead and do whatever yeah. you want with your art style. Well, because it's like, too, like, I don't need it to look hyper real. Yeah. You don't have to have every single fur strand, like, look well, perfect I mean, on something. Like, give me stylized kind of all day. Yeah. yeah. It's like they've reached the point now where the, the technology is so mature that, hey, you can run these renders of this. And then we have enough time and money left. Well, let's, let's put something on top. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, let's do yeah. something more with this. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Let's push it. It's that extra layer, the veneer mm-hmm. that goes, yeah. like, on there at the end. Um, I mean, the only complaints I have are minor. Mm-hmm. I, like I'm with you. Like the plot could could have been a little a better, little, a little bit more fleshed there. out. Yeah. Um, and there's some stuff we'll, we'll get to when we cross the spoiler wall. I don't want to get into. Yeah. Yet. That's like again, it, it's, it's super nitpicky. It's nitpicky, but like I, I, I will say that there are there are a lot of pop culture references, mm-hmm. and it will date it. It will. It will. Not age. only that, it is to me there was like a few too many where like by the last one was hitting. I'm like, okay, like this feels like a family guy episode where they're just referencing all these <laughs> or, things. Or like, did, did like did Chris Pine pay yeah. for this? Is this ready out? player like, two? Yeah. What am I yeah, watching? Yeah. You know, like I, I had a moment where I was like, okay, a few is fine, but we're, we're getting pretty deep into it now that like, it didn't necessarily take me out, but it, it, it was mm-hmm. something that like bugged me a little bit. I noticed it versus like just being, you know, yeah. in the movie. Uh, uh, there, there's also a couple of parts I would say during like some of the the most the busier action scenes it's where a little hard to tell, a little hard to tell. You yeah. kind of lose track. It, I think it's partially the art style, but also it's like you look at something like the most recent Spider Verse across the Spider Verse. Yeah, yeah. And they had some wild animation, but it was like, very like, easy to follow. But, you but I could follow it. Yeah, yeah, perfectly. This one, there was a couple of moments where I kind of lost the thread of like, wait, where, where are we facing? What's happening? But well, and, and some of that may be more of a, a more well-versed team with this, like with this kind of animation. Right. And that kind of, like, there's, there's a lot of factors in there sure. that, you know, that you could like hop up and be like, well, you know, actually, you know, yeah. But you know, I definitely agree. Like there were a couple, especially towards the end, there was a, a couple bits where I think if it was maybe brighter, yeah. it would have been a little bit easier to kind of tell what, was, what was going, going on. on. Dark yeah. and gritty New York. <laughs> Which, <laughs> I, it's, I, it's funny, right? Cause the original turtles when, when the comics were written, you know, like dark, dark and, and gritty, gritty New York yeah. was a real thing, you know, yeah. like they were, Times Square was not a cool place. You didn't go hang out there. Whereas right. now they're like dark and gritty New York. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you think, Steven? Yeah. Uh, I liked it a lot. Um, you know, I think y'all have hit on the core piece for me. You know, again, as an adult, uh, there's plenty of nostalgia to play with here for me. Yeah. The plot could have used a little bit more. Mm-hmm. We could have got, we could have done something. Massaged it. Yeah. We could have, we could have worked it. And part of that too is the runtime right now. This is yeah. a pretty short film. It was like an hour 40. Hour 37 or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So it was, it was pretty quick. You don't have a ton of room to turn around in. Well, and, and clearly they like, and they are definitely setting up for more films. Oh, they've already announced that there's a, a TV show and a sequel. Oh, like this okay. Is, they've already said, Hey, like this is, this is greenlit. Gotcha. It's maybe, it's maybe not like halfway done or something like that, mm-hmm. but it's, it's but already it's going to happen. planned to happen interesting well it was announced prior to like this dropping so they were like hey we already know we got something we got enough in the tank here yeah we can put money on it." yeah so and like that's kind of the thing is like you can kind i can kind of forgive some of like i'll say like plot contrivances that happen Mm -hmm. of like okay clearly they're trying to set up stuff for later you know things tv shows whatever so you know there is a little bit of leeway there yeah then it has to be encapsulated into the whole thing right yeah uh, so I, I said I was going to save it. I'm not going to save it. I'm going to drop some trivia here for you. Because sure. we were talking about the, the good, good chemistry, right? mm-hmm. the great interactions amongst everyone. So when they recorded their voice roles, it was done in groups rather than independently. That's, well, that's the best smart. way to do yeah. it. So, so single recording sessions would often see up to seven actors 
nice. Oh, nice. on the soundstage, which allowed them to do a lot of improvisation and play off of each other. Well, well there's like, a lot of like talking over each other. You can that see it with the turtles. You couldn't it's do it if so you were recording well individually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and like as people that record in person instead it's of doing so it online, better. it mm-hmm. makes such a big difference because you can have visual cues. You can look at each other. Yeah. Like it makes such a big difference. Well, and right. even more than that, because even if we were in separate spaces, right, it mm-hmm. would still happen at the same time. If it's like, hey, I'm going to go and record this week and next week Andrew records, there's no room for us to make jokes with each other. Yeah. Whatever yeah. I said is in the can. And then that's it. And you may not even get to hear it. They, you may just have your lines. Mm-hmm. You say you your lines. Say and yeah. then it just gets cut in. Yeah. But for something with the Turtles where it's teenagers, play by actual teenagers, and they're goofing around with you each other. You need that camaraderie. You need that kind of interplay. Yeah. And I think that was an incredibly good an intelligent choice to make here. Mm-hmm. And again, possibly also because I won't say every production does this, right? Like uh, you got to avatar last airbender. I, I think like Aang basically never met the cast until they were done shooting, which is crazy. Like the third season yeah. or whatever, because yeah. he was in school in a different mm-hmm. state or whatnot. But like, uh, so even back, but pre COVID you had stuff like that, but it feels like up until this run with COVID restrictions, it's been harder to pull something like this mm-hmm. off. Whereas now it's a little easier, a little more doable, a yeah. more financially feasible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, super paid off. I uh, mean, honestly, coming in at seventy million for this, it feels like a discount or like like a. It really like, does. It actually, I almost kind of yeah. questioned a like, little bit. Like they got a some, really good some, steal. Like, some accounting shenanigans, or, or is it just that <laughs> you hired, you know, your four principal actors are which are, are young, up and fresh, comers. brand yeah. new. They're cheap, right? Mm-hmm. And that's the other payoff yeah. here of not, of, of not going out and being like, we're going to bring in... Well, let's hope that they're not exploiting them. Well, that's, that's the other yeah. thing. Yeah, well, let's, let's hope. I saw an article, and I, I didn't save it. I wish I had, where it's basically like Seth Rogen said that he did not want to overwork the animators and have like one of those situations where they were like, mm-hmm. you know, in the uh, uh, headlines for like yeah. everybody working overtime and going into yeah. crunch mode to get it done. So they apparently took their time to get it done. Mm-hmm. Um, if again, he's to be believed, who knows? Yeah. Come out tomorrow. He lied. I'm, 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 I mean, like I've never really seen any, Seth like kept he seems like a pretty genuine himself. guy. <laughs> yeah. Like, so I, I feel like he, he honest there, but that I like that idea that he's like, just get it done when it's you're got, done. It's you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're going to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I will say, kind of speaking on Seth Rogen, I wish that they would have utilized some of their our, our secondary mutant characters a mm-hmm. little bit more, because mm-hmm. like they they're kind of more just ex- they kind of exist and they do like they do have some plot relevance, yeah, but not as much as like obviously the main bad guy, which I'm right. you know it's, we'll get into yeah, yeah but later. it's one but of those yeah. things where like I wish that they would have utilized them a little bit more or introduced them a little bit earlier, yeah, so we yeah. had a little bit more time with them, well, so we get a little. Kind of, run into like a Spider-Man 3 or like a, just a DC anything yeah. problem where, where they just, just they, so they throw much. so many characters yeah. at you that there's no real room to develop yeah. anyone. I honestly wasn't expecting that many bad it guys. Was a I, lot. Didn't, I didn't realize we were going to get some yeah. of the really like side characters yeah. in mm-hmm. there. Yeah. And I almost think that that like is a detriment a little bit because you bit. don't get as much time with each because it's like, because the ones that you do get a decent amount of exposure to it's great you it's love really it. fun yeah. and it's like hey could i get either more of that or could i have gotten some more of that with this character and they're like yeah. no go away yeah <laughs> go, go away <laughs> <laughs> just get out of here <laughs> so we're on that we're on, at that point now yeah would yeah. you recommend it would you rewatch it and i'm gonna add a caveat to that are you looking forward to there being more of this yes and yes and yes question I, I, I would need to see the tv show about the quality of like how well they can see, translate I, I the animation well the, the yeah animation, or if it's one of the things where like hey like we've we spent the money to create the assets and now the tv show is cheap it's, just yeah, it's cheap them. because I, it's just I, all potentially because like you already have all the character movements mm-hmm. i don't know uh, yeah i mean that was yeah. something uh my wife was watching old scooby-doo on tubi which go figure that's that's free now apparently <laughs> it's out there uh, I mean, it's been was, out for like 40 years well i know but, but like the it's just free on tubi yeah. or whatever uh, and she was like, you know, I never really paid attention to how much they just reuse animation. Oh, oh yeah. So Han- Hanna- 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 Barbera? Hanna- yeah. Barbera is like, put it in again. Yeah. The- we got eight cells of animation. Make an episode. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did, Disney did Jungle Book, and they're like, I don't care what you do. Just give me a bear in Robin Hood so I can make him do the same dance. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Which, I mean, like, and that's totally fine. Like, reusing animation is is 
a, a right, good so way to save tried money. Tried and true, time tested yes. thing to do. It's yeah. just uh, it's yeah, Scooby Doo did it a lot. Oh, a lot. And you can always tell which uh, oh, uh, yeah. what door they're going to open. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Right. When, when you, you see, see the real door, or the actual animated door, and the, the background. Yeah. Well, I'll also say you've seen one door sequence. You've seen them all. Oh yeah. Because they're all the same. They're all the same. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so for me, I would I would definitely recommend it. I think. For sure, if you have kids and you want to get them into Ninja Turtles, if you were a Ninja Turtle fan, and now, from I would, whatever I era, would say from yeah. a caveat perspective of bringing kids, there is, I'm not going to say there's like curse words, but there is some like, like adult language. Well, it, it's like, you never know because sometimes mm, someone yeah. just goes over their heads, right? Yeah. Like I didn't hear anything that was a red flag. No, there wasn't me. like, like hard curse words. Right. It was more of like... There was less was cursing kind of, in this than the 1990... Oh, the 90s. Oh, all the time, yeah. yeah. The 90s were very different. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a darker, grittier New York. Yeah, but I don't know. I definitely felt this was probably more of like an eight above. Okay. Kind of... Again, I don't have kids. I don't either. I yeah. take my young kids. To- <laughs> yeah, like, don't tell me how to parent my fake kids. <laughs> imaginary, imaginary. Yeah. No, they're fake. That, that was they're from was, Canada. That was just my thing. So, yeah, the, yeah, no, I would, bought a ticket for a tube of salam. You're like, what do you yeah. think, Junior? <laughs> <laughs> Speak up. Uh, yeah, but I would, I would definitely rewatch it. I think um, you know, once it comes to any kind of streaming, oh, for sure, I'll oh, yeah. check it out. And then, Absolutely. yeah, it, I'm with Andrew. Like, as long as the animation holds up on the like the TV show and stuff, I'm, I'm definitely down to watch more. Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think they've set the path here for, mm-hmm. for other, you know, again, given plot relevant stuff at the end of the movie, they, they were already ready for a sequel. Yep, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'd be intrigued to see how that goes, but mm-hmm. definitely a, a rewatch, mm-hmm. recommend, et cetera, et cetera, for me. Are you interested in ruling the world as a shambling horror of amalgamated mutations? Well, we can't offer that. Where is this going? (laughs) Spoilersintendedpodcast.com has pulled every one of our previous episodes into one easy-to-navigate website, no ooze required. (laughs) (laughs) Ooze. Ooze. The idea of all of our episodes at the website, you just press play and they all play at once. (laughs) We should should make that feature. It's just a screaming cacophony just (laughs) slapping you. The, the super cut by super cut would be no cuts. Yeah. Everything's all together. It's just all of our shrill voices screeching at you from every side and Dolby at most, most, most. <laughs> well, so now if you do want a spot where you can listen to all of our, uh, or actually look at all of our screeching into the void, <laughs> yes. you, you can go to Discord. We uh-huh. have a Discord. We have oh, channels yeah. that have what we're playing, what we're watching, what we're listening to. Uh, you know, what's cooking, Doc? That's uh, that's always a great channel yep. to see, you know, kind of what. Pets. what I want to see your pets. Yes. What people are cooking, what people are doing with their pets. No, no, yeah. don't say it like that. That's it's weird. Good... <laughs> are people cooking their pets? We hope not. <laughs> we sure hope not. Unless they're cooking for their pets. In yeah. which case, cool. Make your, that, that's make your cat a steak, coward. <laughs> Anyways, and if you do that, post it on social media and tag us. We got Facebook and Instagram. We're willing to engage with you on those two platforms. That's it. Only those. Only those two right now. Not X. And you can find links to all that. Spoilersintendedpodcast.com. And we are back. We timed that out perfectly. Almost perfectly. Just, just unintentionally. Backflip over the spoiler wall. No big deal. <laughs> Moving on like we Oh, my ankle. <laughs> no, no, we're old. It's, oh, my back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to hit you all with a very, very small amount of trivia. I, I, yeah, I bet there's not too much. <laughs> there's not much. There's it's one thing. <laughs> I, I, well, I've already handed away a couple of them already. Uh, so this is the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles theatrical release movie to earn a fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, Which wow. Is, it's, it's actually surprising. Now, I do kind of understand why some people would lambast the original 1991? I don't. I don't. Well, I mean, technically, Rotten Tomatoes wasn't around. So, like, what are those reviews? It's all people that it's have, all, like... They're biased. Yeah, they're, right. yeah, they're just blasting it. Right. I mean, so, like, as, as a kid who grew up in the 90s, that's a fantastic phenomenal. movie. You can go listen to that episode well, it after got a, this one. It would have got a fresh rating. Well, yeah. and this is all, all again, critics food. here, not yeah. audience scores. Uh, so, this is the second TMNT animated feature based on the property, to not use the Shredder as its main antagonist. Which mm. I think that's a pretty good choice for going off initially into it. Yeah. It's a it's an interesting choice in that it alters, they altered backstory, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, to make it kind of flow. Yeah. 
Um, so I thought that was I thought that was interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I obviously it was mutant mayhem, but like I don't know why I was thinking. Where I was just like, where's the shredder? <laughs> I had that same he's moment in the post credit scene. That's I saw like yeah. like the first trailer. Mid credits was good. I'm like I'm I'm sold. So I didn't really follow up with a lot of the other trailers. Mm-hmm. And so when I got there and you were know, halfway through the movie, I was like, I guess Shredder's just not in this one. Okay, no foot. All right, <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah. Well, I like I mean, this choice. Like, yeah. Clearly, they're setting up um, whatever the, yeah. the 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 main corporation or whatever. I, I CRM or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. And then you know they they do show Shredder. At the, the end, end yeah. but yeah. he's post credits. He'll be in the TV show or but, the next but movie or whatever. They, they moved away from the whole like Splinter and Shredder yes. connected background. All that, that we yeah. know of, that we know of, we yes. don't know, but yeah, for yeah. now at least. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is one for Andrew near and dear right here. <laughs> Director Jeff Rowe asked the Teenage Turtles actors for anime references Hell yeah. during early <laughs> recording <laughs> sessions. To add to the film, so they basically had like and they all just said like, Naruto, like like insert anime references. They're, they're honestly too young for that. Yeah, they're they too probably young. are. They yeah. No, the, I mean the references we got were Attack, Attack on Titan. Titan. Uh, we got um, JoJo. JoJo, yeah. His uh, Donatello's hoodie is JoJo. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm not sure beyond that. I there, was, I, there, I think there was there was a lot of Attack on Titan. Yeah, there was only one. There was one other one, but yeah, Attack on like Titan obviously hero, was the big one. Mm, I don't think so. Maybe? I think. I'm not sure. I don't remember it to like say that definitively. I, like, I, I remember like there, there was, was something else. My another... hero is actually probably a little bit too new for that. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. So we, we got a very narrow. Yeah. Like. Well, that's how it works. <laughs> but I feel like there was another reference when they went to the like when they imagined going into high school. Yeah. But I can't remember what it was. I could if I watch it again, I could probably oh, pull yeah, it out. Well, sure, all yeah. of us could. <laughs> <laughs> Give us enough time. Yeah. I, I'll. Uh, so the the one thing about the Attack on Titan, now that we're past the spoiler wall, I really mm-hmm. wish that they would have gone a little bit harder with the reference that it was like on, like they had to get it on oh, his yeah. back. And they actually did um, like an Attack on Titan style attack to like get it in there. Yeah. Like at the end to like really hit home that it was like. Just drive it home. Yeah. yeah. So I wish they would have gone a little bit harder on that, but it was still yeah. fun that you got one multiple references, which is, you know. Really cool, but then I, I like at the end in the post credits that we do get. He's like he found his people. They're just oh, yeah. a whole bunch of anime nerds just sitting on their computers. On their computers, yeah. yeah, which is great. Well, yeah. also, uh, you know, from my perspective, there we didn't really get like you know, you know to me the the classic here is the cartoons intro. Donatello does machines. You didn't really get that, yeah. And, yeah. But now we have a, a gateway for that, right? Mm-hmm. We're, gonna, we're gonna unlock that. Maybe I don't know. Right. I hope. Yeah. What, uh, what, yeah. what other? Uh, that's about it. Okay. Like, about really, it. <laughs> it's really thick. There, like some of the trivia that people put out here are like stretching it. They're oh, like, yeah. "This is the third time Seth Rogen's been in an animated oh, movie, gosh. Oh, and it's not even trivia. Like, second time being a voice actor alongside." So, get out of here, people! You're <laughs> you're reaching for this. Yeah, there hasn't been enough. Like like Ryan said, it's earlier, not enough time. The <laughs> the media. Um, this is the only Turtles movie to have been out for four days. Like, well, yeah. <laughs> as of now, it's the most recent Turtles movie. They just yeah. update no, that post every day, like five days, <laughs> six days. There's, I guarantee you, there's someone that would do that. Oh yeah. Oh, you can you imagine like the Wikipedia wars over some obscure Transformer? Yeah, of course there's someone sitting out there updating <laughs> this. Come on. Oh, so yeah, I mean that's that's really all I've got. There's just there hasn't been enough media yeah. time to like get interviews, yeah, or like interviews, and stuff yeah, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's throw it out there. Spectacle. Yeah. What we got. Let's go. Um, so again, I I think we not to repeat it too much. Love the art now style. Repeat it. It's Love worth the repeating. animation. I really feel like you hit the nail on the head though with like if the some of the ending scenes in that fight could have been a tiny bit brighter, a little bit brighter. If there yeah. just been a little bit more ambient light coming from Get, neon mm-hmm. signs or something. We could have just thrown some neon in there, yeah, like yeah. Times Square. Some kind of contrast because I feel like especially in the end, there's a lot of dark colors mm-hmm. and they're all and, just and kind it's of a lot of like different dark shades of green. Which, yeah, and, and I totally get that. Like, kind of their whole shtick is that they can only go out at night because sure. they, they're easier to conceal. They're ninjas. Blah 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 blah. I'm fine that's, with that. That's totally yeah. fine. It, but I, I think it definitely needed to have maybe a little bit more color separation so you could actually kind of see yeah. a lot of, like, silhouettes and kind of things that were happening. Yeah. yeah. It definitely would have gone a lot further than what it was. But that's such a really small nitpick. It, it really is. There was only, like, a couple scenes. And it was um, – I'm reaching here. It was, it was like – I feel like if, if – they had zoomed out a little bit further. Yes. You could have seen the flow of the action a little mm-hmm. better. It was almost like the camera was shaking, but they were close. moving and it was too close and, and too similar the, all colors. All the lines are squiggling. And, yeah. 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 And so there was just a couple moments like that. Other than that, I thought the, like the, um, 
the animation style, especially where it looks like just like someone drew an explosion and smoke in a notebook. Yeah. Like that kind of look. It almost looks unfinished. Mm -hmm. I loved that. I thought that was great. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I, I've brought this up in some other casts. I think mm -hmm. I mentioned it in uh, one of the Mission Impossibles. I can't remember which one it was now. Uh, but like, if we're going to fight in a confined space, I'm talking about the garage fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Give me a top down view. Oh, yeah, on, yeah. Like, like, like stretch. Like, I want to be able to see all the turtles moving at once with stuff. Yeah. Give me a reason to go back and rewatch it where I can be like, okay, I watched Michelangelo that time. I want to watch Leo this time. I want to watch, you know, I, give I, me one of those. Come I on, will people. say though, that they did a good job of blocking that you knew, hole. You knew where that fight was going. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And they like, and they really segued for each different turtle really, really well yes. between it. It actually felt like some of the people that were working on this, uh, particularly the ones that directed the like those specific fight scenes mm -hmm. and the Jackie the Splinter fight scene yeah um, yes. in the uh, corporation during the milking scene yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> those two really actually did feel like the, older martial arts the films. Splinter fight was yeah. really well done yeah I was very surprised given what well, they were going we, with we got a Jackie character. Chan fight scene in a not yeah. Jackie Chan movie I know it, it was, was great. awesome. With and him I, being it. And I will yeah. say, they did give us a kind of top-down shot of that fight, but it was when the car was doing donuts. Yes. And it was like, we needed it It was more early. of a joke at Yeah, that it was point. more of a joke. We yeah. needed it earlier to just, just kind of see the flow. Like, mm -hmm. Well, And I feel like, again, I'm reaching for, like, real complaints because mm -hmm. I, I I do think, like, it was it was really well done visually. The yeah. spectacle was great. The um, When you compare it directly to, like, Spider-Verse and either one of them, I feel like there were more shots in the Spider-Verse that were, like, holy cow, you can only do this in animation that mm -hmm, really yes. stood out of like, ooh, th whereas this one didn't have as many of those where it was like mm -hmm. things were framed and blocked great and like the the flow of action was good in a lot of scenes. But some but of the perspectives you they just... Did, they didn't push the yeah. camera. They didn't, they didn't yeah. push the camera to limits that you can only do in animation a whole lot. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of wish they would have taken it up a notch, but it's like I can't physically fit an IMAX camera yeah. in this, in this <laughs> right. Coke bottle, but I'm going to do it because I can in animation, right? right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the um, the the final like kind of battle or whatever mm -hmm. was fine. I actually, well, actually, dialing back, I liked the car chase scene, which was really fun. Oh yeah, that was yeah. really good. Yeah, uh, with um, with the um, I, it's just He Man music to me. I can't even oh, remember oh, what, um, what song it is. Oh my gosh, which uh, one? The, uh, hey, my, yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it is He Man music. It's just He Man music because it's just yeah, the, meme. the meme. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was like, "What He Man song?" Oh, the meme. <laughs> the meme. <laughs> the, this is this is my life now, basically. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. I'll look it up and play it while you. you yes, talk uh, about other spectacles, Stephen. What do you think about it? Uh, so the He Man song is called "Fabulous Secret Powers." Got it. <laughs> okay. The song is by Slack Circus. Oh, I'll find okay, yeah. Stephen. What do you think about spectacle? I thought it was great. I, I really like the animation style. I mean, we, we have talked about this, I know, between ourselves. I don't know. I feel like it made it into the cast at some point about, like, pushing this style, right? Yeah. I know it got on there for Spider-Verse. Yeah, definitely. But, well, but you really, like... The, this is distinct uh, from Spider-Verse. Yes. Well, it, yeah. and that's the good thing, because I know, like, I, I've seen someone on the internet get mad. They were like, they just copied Spider-Verse. And I'm no, like, no, it's not at all. completely different. Completely different. This is inspired by. Yes. At, at worst. But that's what you want, though. Uh-oh. We got some music coming in. Where is it? Is this it? This is fabulous secret powers. I don't think that's what it up. That's not it. You might have to go further <laughs> in. Oh no! This is what happens. This is what we get. This is what we get oh, for trying no. to do this slide. No, Just, it is. It is that you have to go for, further forward though. <laughs> that is totally the song. Okay. I'm, I'm telling you right now. I'm looking at the lyrics. 25. It's loading. It's got to go to space and come back. Hold on. <laughs> the internet's working hard here. There it yeah, is. See, I told you. I guess that was the extended cut. The first. One. I don't no. know the actual words of the song. <laughs> but honestly, though, what, what is it? Um, what if we had where uh, we had it in Super Mario Brothers? We had it in uh, Guardians 3, I think. It's the mm -hmm. same song that's been set to a fight like multiple times uh, in not, this year. Not Beastie Boys. We did no, not have a Beastie, Beastie Boys song. Boys, but it's, it's something like that. 
And I'm really happy to see something where this, where we get the same idea, where it's kind of pop culture music, and it's not the same song. Well, so it's not I'll, Thunderstruck. And I'll say, Thunderstruck. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll definitely say this too: is this is the right way? We're getting ahead of ourselves here, no, but no, this, keep going. no, but this is the right way to add in music into like yeah. uh, like popular music into, into a, a movie, song. yeah, and make it actually make sense. Well, especially when you have a film that has heavily relied on kind of meme and it will say internet type references yes. for its comedy mm-hmm. and you build this in like this is this is connected this is what i would expect well, the and turtles it, and it's actually and in their universe the too do. yeah yeah which it's such a good addition and it, it it helped levitate the scene a little bit more than what you would kind well, of Well, it could expect. have just been, you know, a car chase. You have just the generic action, yeah. Yeah. kind of music going on in the background. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, they had no the diggity from Blackstreet in this thing. I was like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I, I really like the mutant designs. I love yeah. Superfly. Oh, yeah. Just, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They that did, one big yeah, arm the and the two yeah, little the bitty big. arms in his stomach. Yeah. 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 But I, I really like um, Leatherhead. Um, her Rose like, Byrne, yeah, yeah, she yeah. had a great design. Just the glowing eyes, yeah. yeah. Like there was one scene towards the end of the film where she's just in the background, uh-huh. and, and it's just, just like, a, and it's just you just see these eyes, eyes. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, all the all the designs. I mean, for as much as we talked early on in the segment about. Uh, it was hard time to see where people were moving. Mm-hmm. Everything yeah. passed the silhouette test. Oh, Even yeah. Even the turtles, oh, yeah. with them going back to... This is another piece of trivia. I held back on y'all. Oh, oh gosh. Uh, <laughs> going back to the 80, 80, late 80s, early 90s cartoons, uh, they don't typically... The armbands are not colored. Yeah, the original ones were like... They were all red, I want to say. Well, the original... I mean, the original... The armbands? No, so the what? original comic books, the they were... the headbands. No, no, not the headbands no, the, are colored. Yeah, that's elbow. elbow. But the el- oh, elbow yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and knee... That is correct. Pat, like, yeah, they yeah. have their distinct colors on it. They also had the classic, like, with their initials mm-hmm. on their belt buckle. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's also, again, a cartoon throwback. That's not something that you see in a lot of other turtle mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. Uh, so that helped to differentiate... Because that is one concern, right, with the turtles. You're like, I mean, if you just put them in plain clothes, I'm not sure if I can tell you which one's which. Well, in this well, one, they did a good job of their different heights. Well, they have like different the raff, physiques. Like, raff is raff wide. Has the whole, yeah. like, is uh, wide. bandana over his whole head type yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and that's I think that's actually been a thing that's kind of been added on as the franchise gets older over time. So, like, in Rise, it's very similar. Raph is a big, bulky turtle yeah. where, like, Leo's a little bit more slender, more athletic. Then yeah. you have Donnie, who's definitely a kind of taller nerd style. And Mikey's kind of short. Yeah. 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 yeah, and they, and that's such a... It does a good job of, like, comparing it to, like, the 1990s one where they're all the same. It's well, just, well yeah. the goal there was they saved a little bit of money. Yeah, they, they only just, had to make four animation like, purposes. Just, there, this like, this yeah. turtle only has to roll once, and then you just copy-paste it three times and put new colors on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, I think overall, again, I was the most thing I was... The thing I was looking forward to the most was how are we pushing CGI and making it look distinct? Mm-hmm. Keep interesting. doing movies please, like this. Please, yeah. please keep doing this. Especially if it's only going to cost 70 to 100 million. Yeah. Like line, that line sounds up, like a bargain. Down. Right? Yeah. Disney's like, you mean I could do this without paying 200 oh, million? Oh, gosh. Disney, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right. Well, on that note, performance. Yeah. Uh, I thought they were all pretty fantastic, especially for the core cast. I really like yeah. Donatello probably the most because he's probably the most emotive. Donnie, Donnie was great. I yeah. thought he was oh, great were, in this. But they were all great. They were honestly. all really good. They really they were were. Really I don't great. have a rage problem. You have a rage problem. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, Don. All right, Raph. I need you to take all that rage, and this is your time. Use it here. And You're going Mike, loud. Mike in the back. Mike in the background. And then we're going to get you some therapy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I feel like, um, yeah, especially the core cast and the chemistry they had was great. Mm-hmm. Their voices, again, they sound like teenagers, and that like just goes so far to like driving home the fact that they are young kid they're teenagers yeah. you know where like you know we said earlier like all the other previous versions they've been voiced by middle-aged men who are voice actors trying to sound so tubular tubular bro you know yeah, it's yeah. like radical dude well of course then we have you know like mondo r- rolls in and it's you know paul rudd who's like what 55 at this point <laughs> right <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's, he's ageless like, like he's ageless. Rogan is in there john you know yeah like, I mean, they're getting up there but yeah. you know can you imagine uh that sound stage where it's like the four teenage turtles and Paul Rudd walks like bro like to like whoever oh, yeah. remember, he plays Mikey he's like bro bro that bro. probably happened when they walked no, in and they're like hey let's put this in the they movie probably, like, like <laughs> Seth was just like standing to the side with a microphone like no go meet him go meet him I think the only the only one that like to me was not not a bad performance but just kind of annoying was Post Malone as Ray Filet. 
I didn't. I didn't love that. That character just couldn't have. Could have just not existed. That, and that could have very made no easily. Difference. Yeah, that been was cut a completely. Joke. And yeah. that was. And they yeah. played it too many times. Yep. They just kept going back to that same thing, and I was like, and it's like that wasn't that funny. This wasn't good the first time. Now I've seen it three times, <laughs> it was, and I'm mad. It like, wasn't get it good. Out of here. But we accepted it, and then you brought it back. It's like, okay, at this point, I don't accept it. <laughs> but at, at that point, it felt like. Is someone just friends with Post Malone? Did y'all want to just get that name in the credits? Like what? Because it served. He just I, I don't know. Really wanted to be a turtle in Again, a turtles movie. I don't know. I'm an old man. Maybe kids watching it love that, and they're like, <laughs> Ray, you play. You know, like, kids could be saying that all across America tonight. I have no idea. But that—that uh, that to Monroe, me was the only performance the that was like. Eh. Uh, I did like. I'm gonna absolutely butcher this. Do it. Go for it. Ayo. Ed Beery, Ed, Ed, Ed Beery, Ed I don't Beery. know. I don't know. Uh, I the, the, the the girl who played April, April. Yeah. she had great deadpan. Yes, for a lot of her yes. for a lot of her lines, just because it's very like again, it's very millennial style humor. Yeah, where it's kind of matter of fact and observational. Yeah, and well, and you desperately need the yeah, the, the neophyte, the straight. Well, it's not the it's straight like man. The straight man. Yeah. Versus the like when the turtles are just like going off about it, and like they start like twerking and everything, and she's just like. I'm recording this to get people to like you, right? Or whatever. <laughs> I don't think people are going to like you for this. Yeah. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> Keep recording. <laughs> and then they just double down. Yeah. But yeah, like she did a really good job. She did, yeah. And um, uh, the only the only thing, the audio mixing on Ice Cube, and maybe that's just kind of how he delivers stuff, mm-hmm. was a little hard to understand a it's couple a times. Up and down. I didn't have any issues in my screen. Well, really towards the end of the the film mm. when he's in the mutant form. When it's like multiple versions the, of his voice. Yeah. Coming through. I was like, yeah. I can barely understand what I, you just yeah, said. I don't know. It that probably was, doesn't matter, but. Like like audio mixing at yeah. that point. Yeah. Because as Superfly, he was pretty understandable. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which he signed up for the role based on he really liked the character's name and his kids <laughs> love TMNT. So he's like, well, there you I go. Do it, right? yeah. <laughs> I got it. Which, I mean, again, he, he played a pretty good villain, too. Yeah. Yeah, uh, honestly, I, I thought he did. So, and, and especially uh, for the whole like, uh, hey, like we're gonna be cool with each other, we're gonna get along, mm-hmm. you're gonna emphasize, and then you get the twist where he's like, you're either with us or you're dead. Yeah. Well, he gave off that vibe oh, really menace. well of yeah. like that person who's like, I, you're trying to be buddies with me, but it feels like it's for nefarious reasons, mm-hmm. or like as soon as we're not buddies, it's not a good. It's oh, yeah. gonna we're break. Cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he he pulled that off great. Yeah, I think one. Pro and one con I have with the performances. Pro would be uh, Giancarlo Esposito as Baxter Stockman in the opening scene. Uh-huh. And the con is he didn't show up again. No, no, no. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's my con. <laughs> that, that's a pro. Like way to go getting getting him and doing a new Baxter origin story. Cause, yeah. Like I thought that was great. Um, the con would be that they got um, Natasha Dimitri, who's Nadia from What We Do in the Shadows, to play Wingnut. And they didn't really do just enough didn't with, do her. with her. Yeah, because like, Rose Byrne is killing it as uh, Leatherhead. Yeah, which just a couple of quips. Like, and yeah. she probably had what, like maybe five lines. Not even a ton. Yeah, and they they paired the two of them up a couple times, mm-hmm. and I was like, yes, yes, yes come on. And yes. then they didn't do anything with. Uh, I want to call her Nadia. Her name is Nadia. <laughs> well, but and <laughs> that's, that's, kind of the, <laughs> that's kind of the issue is is like the the film wasn't long enough to give, or they weren't on screen long yeah. enough to give us enough time to have some really fun yeah, interactions. I, I, right. When we mentioned it pre-spoiler but I would not have objected if they had well again we could have just got rid of Ray that would have been fine sure and we could have like paired back one or two others and well, that would have let everybody else breathe a little well, more and honestly the ha- movie's not that long it's like 90 minutes right uh, like like an hour, hour 40 hour, yeah. hour 37 like I'm gonna double we can set it a couple times we'll double check but yeah. well but the the thing could have been longer like, <laughs> like even like Seth Rogen and John Cena didn't get much to do at all no they didn't st- uh, Rocksteady Bebop, and Bebop yeah. yeah and it was kind of sad because I was really looking forward to to having like this unhinged Seth Rogen bebop. Well, because like right? unlike the Mario movie where Seth Rogen was Donkey Kong, and I was like, okay, that's yeah, fine. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. I was like, Seth Rogen as bebop. That's this like perfect. This yeah. works. Yeah. You know, it yeah. was actually funny because he was when he was talking at first. I was like, man, this. Why does it sound so familiar as a warthog? Oh, it's because he's. Uh, Pumba in the the remake. Oh of yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> like, like, boy, he is typecast. <laughs> typecast as a warthog. Do you want that? <laughs> you ride that all the way to the bank. <laughs> oh, and we we were wrong. It's uh, the out- runtime is one hour thirty nine minutes. Thirty nine. Uh, okay. okay. so I was closer we were, to one forty. We were, we were hitting. No, you went over. That doesn't count. I said one. Price, price right rules. Right rules. You went no, over. You're right out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we haven't even mentioned Jackie Chan. I thought he did fantastic. He did Splinter. great. So, and I will say, I think that they kind of, I, I saw some reviews, right? Where people complaining mm-hmm. about the treatment of Splinter. And I think for the initial 
first half of the film, it felt like he got kind of the short end of the stick. Well, yeah, he but it's kind of the whole point because he's the but, parent of teenagers. Right, right. Yeah. But they made it pay off, right? Yeah. And by having some, if you had just yeah. had, you know, I don't know, somebody else, H. John Benjamin as Splinter, I don't think it would have paid off as well <laughs> as Jackie Chan did. I well, would still watch that movie. I would too. But, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I would. Well, but he has a really good, caring yes. demeanor. He does. And especially whenever he comes and saves them from the milking. And then <laughs> the, the, the comedic okay. delivery that Jackie Chan does, and that's it. Wait a minute. What is this machine? What is this? Is this a milking machine? Like it's the, the <laughs> slow <laughs> realization. It's not a milking machine. And then it shows yeah. the, uh, the no the label. <laughs> <laughs> That's that is some serious classic Looney Tunes move right there. Oh, and yeah. I'm here for it. Yeah. Well, uh. but, but I love the the turn at the end. Whenever he is, you know, like right after he saves him, he's like, "No, we're gonna go home, and then you're never gonna, you know, you're gonna do what I say because I right. know what's best for you," and mm -hmm. then. Uh, Ice Cube or Superfly says the exact same thing. And he right. has everyone, the, the he moment. has the, oh no, yeah. I don't want to be this. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and it's those kind of like emotional moments that really sell when, when someone can actually portray that through like a, a animated character. So, yeah. So Jackie Chan did not audition for this role. They, no they, they're they just no. like, hey, we just no, want Jeff, you. Jeff Rowe wrote him a letter. <laughs> I need you. <laughs> well, because, I mean, like, well, I think you. he's great as Splinter. I got to have you. I don't know. That's not what he actually said. I don't know. Um, <laughs> he sprayed cologne in the letter. <laughs> XOXO. <laughs> well, I'm curious if for, like, the TV show, they're going to get him to we, voice act. So you remember, uh, what, mid Jackie, Jackie Chan's Jackie Chan Adventures? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it's not. He's, yeah, he's not, like, averse to it. Well, I mean, also, can you imagine Jackie Chan rolls up to a production and he's like, you mean. I'm not going to break my ankle today. <laughs> my like 60 year old self is appreciating. Oh, he's this. older than that. Oh gosh. How old is he? Uh, he's definitely look that his, up. Look that up. Uh, looking it up. He, he's 69 years old. Oh, I'm nice. safe. I'm nice. safe. <laughs> also nice, but mostly I'm safe. I was going to say he's got to be at least 70, but he's I was pushing it. Close, yeah. yeah. But yeah. yeah, I mean, if he's, I mean, again, he's kind of, been out of the realm of he can do Jackie Chan stuff mm -hmm. for a while now, but if yeah. this is what we can find for him, all for it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like keep it going. Milk that. <laughs> this oh. is a better use oh. of Jackie Chan than a lot of his American movies. Honestly. It really is. Sure like, is. Apparently, he was in some one with John Cena. Oh yeah, just recently. So that one is more I of a. Uh, I was talking I to a friend at work that. who watched it over the weekend, and I was like, "Why?" I saw the thumbnail, and I knew immediately John Cena's in that for like eight minutes, so that this cheap <laughs> Chinese movie can like be sold overseas. Jackie Chan's screen. probably in it for yeah. twenty minutes. He's like, yeah. "Yeah, it was like, it was one of those where yeah. like it's all Wolf. the other cast, but the two of them are in it for like a little bit." I haven't watched it, so. Don't quote me on that, but it looks. <laughs> this, it it looks like some listener right now driving off through. That movie's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I should have won an Academy Award as he drives off a cliff. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, on that note, let's uh, let's move forward here. Yeah. Some music. Some score. Some score. score. So again, surprising that uh, Trent Reznor and Atticus just, Ross like teamed up for a Ninja Turtles I, movie. Like uh, those, all of that. So they got to owe together. someone a favor. Something. Maybe, somebody yeah. knows somebody. Maybe they were just hanging out know. at a party and Seth Rogen's like, you should do the Turtles movie. So I'll definitely say this. <laughs> I love Nine Inch Nails. You should do my movie. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> um, I'll definitely say this. I was sad that we didn't get like a main theme. I would have liked yeah. that as well. We got, we got that little taste of a uh, go ninja, go uh -huh. ninja. Yeah. Well, like, that was more of like just an homage. To I the, know, but still when it happened, I like kind of sat up in my seat. Like, oh, what do we get here? Okay. No, <laughs> no, no. All right. We're moving on. But sad. yeah, I was, I was sad that we didn't get like a, a true team and theme, mm -hmm. which like that is kind of the fun part of it. I think with, with the franchise well, itself. Like, can you imagine if they did kind of like the whole, um, the, the cartoon intro, can you imagine if they had like April recording them and she's like, we got to introduce you to the world. Like, what do you <laughs> like? Like, what do you like? What is your person? Like, and like, well, Mikey, you like the party, right? Like, That'd be like great. The, the Mikey's old, a party dude. Yeah. yeah like, like yeah. the old cartoon theme it's song kind of weaves theme, in there. Like somewhere that we can like listen to it. Like, yeah. You pull right up the, now. You pull up the, right the, the, the 90s it's intro. It's like got to be like a minute long. Oh, tops, right? Like, it's it's got to be like four intro, minutes. Intro, like, what's yeah. wrong with us as kids? <laughs> they're, they're like, We're just sitting <laughs> in front of the screen. <laughs> they're, like, they're, they're like, we can only afford for 16 minutes of animation. Do a four minute intro. <laughs> Do a four minute <laughs> intro. <laughs> but yeah, I like. Heroes on a half shell, turtle power. Fearsome fighting team. 
We're really hip. <laughs> Man, I, this theme is so good. It's so good. And with, like, the again, the layering of comedy that they were doing, they could have played this and riffed on it the whole way. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. But it's, it's one of those things where, like, I really, like... I think the soundtrack needs something like that. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like an earworm. Yeah. I Just agree. because like the rest of it, it's, it's music that I will absolutely like throw on and listen to, but it's not music that I would like immediately say, Oh, this is, well, cause like, well, you don't walk out of the theater doing like the, it's yeah. actually kind of, uh, they, they sort of made this own joke with the whole milking thing where like, we'll sing this song and like, they're all trying to sing it like, yo, none of you know the words. <laughs> oh yeah. The BTS song. <laughs> that, was, that was a great little bit. Well, the, so like when I think of like Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, right. They did social network. They did girl with the dragon tattoo, the U S version. Did they, did they do that together? Yeah. They I did didn't realize the, that. um, I th- they most of the things I think the Atticus Ross, Atticus Ross has worked on has been with Trent. So, so I wonder if it's like Atticus is like knows Trent and they're like, "Hey, I want this," and he's like, "Get in here, Trent." Right? <laughs> I yeah, don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but then they also did Gone Girl. There's something else. But like when I think of their soundtracks, I think of like uh, ethereal electronica, like mm-hmm. you know, driving. And usually it's like those like dark, edgy thrillers like yeah. The Social Network. Yeah. Well, Gone well Girl. I mean, like Gone Girl, a Dragon Tattoo. Yeah. Like, that all fits. Because, like, the, the Dragon Tattoo soundtrack rips. It's awesome. But it's, again, it's what you think of when you think of Trent Reznor working with Atticus mm-hmm. Ross. You're well, like, again, oh, yeah. you're like, Trent well, Reznor, Nine Inch Nails. Like, okay, well, let's do a fluffy right. kid. Like, wait, hold on. Well, well, now, yeah. I'll definitely this say this. The, what the music that is there is actually pretty it's fantastic. Good. Right. Good. Like, there's kind of, like, some cyberpunk kind of, like, yeah. not, I'm going to say lo-fi vibes, but, like, it has some really good, like, yeah. Bits to it. It's just not music that it would immediately go like, "Oh, that's the Turtles well, movie." So to yeah. wind around that point, uh, what I was trying to get at, and I kind of lost the thread there, was like they don't really make the type of soundtracks where you have a theme song. Where exactly. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. We're not like Hans. Yeah, Zimmer that, and that's here, not a, that's not a problem John for Williams like on lay down them. Superman theme. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. like it's it's kind of one of the things too. Where it's like whenever you think of Goofy movie, the only song you think of is Eye to Eye. Yeah, <laughs> like in that like that's not even like the main music of the movie right it's just it's a fantastic that is, that song is the earworm that just shows just, up yeah yeah it takes that's over a, that's a legitimately good pop song all it, right it really is <laughs> like, yeah tev campbell absolutely killed it. nailed it just <laughs> nailed it, tev. Blasted it out of the park <laughs> ah yeah I, I mean beyond that like i thought the audio mixing was good the, yeah i don't know what else to add other than like well, I, I feel like what i've listened to of the soundtrack outside of the movie like, yeah. has been good yeah but i agree that it needed if they're not going to do a play on the old like turtles theme, Man, it needed a new one. It. it needed something to like something have fresh. a yeah, yeah like yeah. A, a I will say though, again, we we talked about it earlier weaving in. I'm just gonna call it the He Man song. <laughs> the, yeah. the, the He Man song is fantastic. The that was really well done. And again, yeah. we've we've had multiple movies where there's like, oh, I'll put some pop music over the fight uh, or some, some right, yeah, some rock some or whatever. Thunderstruck in yeah. there, it'll be funny. Yeah, let's let's get some sabotage. You know, yeah. like. I, I'm really happy we got something else that was one. It was upbeat enough you could play with it in the fight, but it wasn't just the same five there songs. Were so heard. many '90s hip hop tracks too that it's like there Seth Rogen clearly like <laughs> Tribe Called Quest. Like, can we kick it? Yeah, yes, we can. <laughs> that, that's in that. There's so many things I'm like, okay, someone my age. Yeah, <laughs> made this well, yeah and like that's kind of the. The thing like, is, or like they had that people, moment where they're like, "Oh, we're gonna make it. We're gonna make something, uh, you know, for the soundtrack." I was pulling some pop music, like, "What can we get? What we get?" Post Malone's like, "My stuff's expensive, right?" And, and they're like, "Well, let's just let's reel back to the '90s. Some of these people are desperate." Yeah. <laughs> well, I, and I wish that they like because they had a lot of anime references. I really wish that they would have had a little bit no, of an homage to like the really good opening what, what you, songs for on Attack there? on Titan. Okay. All right, Which yeah, yeah, of fair. the Attack on Titan? The, the most one. first the, one. The most recent one. The yeah. Edge Lord one. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, God, no. Please, no. Please, not that. That'd have been like, why? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. On that note. Yeah. Let's talk plot. Sure. Let's do it. We, we all bagged on it for being a little thin. Justify it. I want to hear it. I mean, it was a little thin. It was. Justify I mean, like, it. I, I think. For me, like there, there, there were some things that like Raph's rage, right? They allude to it, but we never really it see it. It. Oh, it, wasn't honestly, that, it wasn't really that raging. We never see him. Like if we had a scene where he loses it and we see uh-huh. that rage, we're like, oh, reel it in, he reel does it have in a Raph? problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we never see it. We everyone talks about it, and it's almost like we're just supposed to know from other turtles media that, this that is what he is. He's the angry yeah. guy, but they didn't show it in this movie. So there, there's stuff like that throughout it that kind of like. Okay, like we've alluded to this, but we didn't actually show it. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing I would say is the, again, just the pop culture references. There's like so many of them. They're going to date it. It'll date it, yeah. It'll, it'll date it. And it also like when they, and this is 
similar but different than my glass onion problem where like they have oh. celebrities in a movie where people are playing them. Uh-huh. It's when they oh, mention the same world. Yeah. Well, when they mention a celebrity from our world, it immediately takes me out of the turtles world for a moment. And I think of that celebrity and I'm like, wait, what? like Ferris Bueller kind or, of well, a little bit. Matthew Broderick. Yeah. Like yeah. it's like, okay, weird. And it's like, so they reference Batman. So they live in a world where the Batman comics exist, but the Ninja Turtle comics don't. Okay. <laughs> and again, that's my own neurotic like issues. Whoever said the TMNT doesn't exist in real life, sir. <laughs> in their world, that'd be wild. <laughs> they're like, they're like, we should be just like these comics in this cartoon from the nineties. <laughs> But like th- there was just to me, I I like, and this is because I'm an old man. I like the the setup and payoff of like, here's a fake rap star that like there's a poster on Donnie's wall of someone and he's uh-huh. listening. And they're like, who you listen to? And he says, oh, it's the new track from some random guy. Mm-hmm. And then later, that becomes relevant. You know what I mean? Instead yeah. of just like, uh, sometimes it feels cheap when it's just like a reference to someone modern. It's like the, uh, well, the like, script writing equivalent of like the the Leonardo yeah, the, the Leo uh, pointing, pointing, Leo screen, pointing yeah. at yeah. the screen meme, you know, where it's like it's like they're just throwing stuff out here because it's going to get people to go, oh, now, I know that thing. I'll definitely say that they did a better job with with that kind of stuff than mm-hmm. the Mario movie did. Oh, for sure, it, oh, it yeah, didn't sure. feel so yeah. heavy handed. No, 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 in yeah. here, but there is definitely a lot of it. But yeah. a lot of at least a lot of it were jokes and not just references. Right. Well, yeah. I also yeah, yeah. liked when you know like Splinter does his references. He breaks up the Chris's. I brought you the Chris's. Yeah. It's like, man, that's a that's an old meme now. It's like, oh, this is what happens. Oh gosh, I hate kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but well, the, but that's kind of the thing though is like from his perspective, like he's relevant. trying to be yeah. he's trying to be a relevant dad. Yeah. And Hello, he's, fellow teens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like oh man, that scene hit too. And he's oh, like, I felt so he, bad. Like, for throws him. the party for them. Like they've been you know doing whatever. He's wow, oh, yeah. I'll make the party. We and like oh the bit where he's sitting in the chair looking at the two fo- different photos of them mm-hmm. where they're like piled on him as babies, and then the other one he's like taking a selfie and they're all walking away. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, that hurts. Yeah. So the other the other bit that I really loved one this definitely is paramount to like the they wrote the core turtles really really well mm-hmm. for their interactions with each other yeah and basically Leo essentially being the tattletale because he has <laughs> right. the, the honor the whatever, honor yeah. you know honor whatever you want to call it because he doesn't want one want to get in trouble and two right. he doesn't want to lie to Splinter right and like them you know like ragging on him for it. A super it, teenager it, thing to do. It yeah, felt it, like, yeah, that teenager. I was like, y'all three are the ones that are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Be but, nice to split her. But they did such a good job. But that's the thing is, like, as you get older, yeah. you're like, you, you really empathize with, with Splinter here. And you're just like, man, teenagers. <laughs> I know. They're the worst. <laughs> yeah. They're the worst. Also, and this is a, a minor, like, random thing of, like, at the front when they're, like, getting the groceries and stuff. And they're just stealing it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're not paying for it. And I had this thought of like, so wait, is all their stuff stolen? All their TVs okay, and so, stuff. I've never thought about how do the Ninja Turtles get their stuff. So and I'm like, I will say, why are they trying to stop the foot from stealing? They're stealing everything. <laughs> the foot doesn't exist in this, as far as we know. Yeah, I, I will say though, I watched that sequence and I was yeah. like, huh, you know, in the '90s. I watched 1990. I never questioned how they get money. I Raph never questioned for the pizza, <laughs> but he pays for it. Michelangelo how, getting paid. Oh, Michelangelo, sorry, yeah. Michelangelo yeah, yeah. paying for the pizza. I never questioned that then. Now watching them theft is like, huh? You know, they're really kind of cut off from the uh, the economy here. How would they <laughs> yeah. generate financial income? I mean, uh, there's so many remote jobs with like Amazon and stuff, like just do, doing reviews. You you can find work. <laughs> Raph is out <laughs> driving a delivery truck in a trench coat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I did like the um, oh, just kind of like the the bit of whenever they they meet April for the first time mm-hmm. and like they're trying to like Leo obviously is very enamored with with yeah. April mm-hmm. and um, just that whole scene of him like trying they're trying to tell her that her scooter is being stolen uh-huh. and oh, yeah. he's just like I I can't do anything about this yeah like because he's he's so. Just teenager. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, they, they nailed that like awkward teen. They vibe really did. With a lot of those interactions. Even with her, with like, you know, her like not being popular at school mm-hmm. because she barfed all oh. over the set and the that most was, Nickelodeon. People moment. never forget. Nope. Yeah. Seriously. How could you? <laughs> I would have jackals. 
I, I mean, remember it I too, mean, though. I, there are still some some stories from when I was in elementary school and middle school that mm. I still remember, and I remember that person's name, and I will never forget. Oh, the wow. worst. The worst is when you you're that person's worst nightmare. They're, they're going to sleep, <laughs> and I go like, surely nobody remembers that one thing. And then Andrew's going to sleep, goes, I remember that one. People thing. People don't forget. Yeah, yeah. Worst. Outside that window, <laughs> never forget. The worst is when you try to relate a story to someone about this other person from decades ago, and you can remember the nickname that resulted from the story. Mm-hmm. You like struggle for their names. Like, Oof. Oh yeah. Ooh, that's, we're yeah, terrible. That's real bad. Am, yeah. Am I the baddie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the only other thing that was kind of tough was just like the CEO scientist lady or whatever mm-hmm. that clearly is an evil person. Right. She, she S- called Cynthia on the Cynthia sh- Utram or whatever. Yeah. Oh, another bit of trivia there. Oh yeah. Whatever her last name is, is what the species Krang is. Oh, oh really? Wow. Her okay. color palette is also the same color palette as. Oh no. Huh. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah. So I don't know well, if that's a spoiler or not. We'll find out. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah. clearly, like, she's going to be, like, that corporation is going to be the big conglomerate bad, yeah. bad right. guy yeah. for the for the franchise, which, like, I'm totally fine for it. I just, like, it was kind of funny, like, because I didn't know, like, that they had other stuff already planned. So, right. like, I was watching the movie, and she's just gone. And I'm like, so we just not going to talk about this lady ever again? Right, and she's yeah. just a bad person, and she was milking them, and then that's it? And then she shows up at the very end. <laughs> yeah, and then she shows up at the end. Oh, okay, we got more movies coming on. Sure, whatever. Well, I, yeah, so yeah. I thought it was hilarious because watching it pre when we recorded the 90s, episode we were talking about what we thought would be in this or whatnot we were like yeah you know turtles it's not really a reboot like, they just kind of do it again and they're like they're doing the story it's like it, this they did not do it again this is a different story yes uh, this is uh oh. i feel like i've misled people speaking <laughs> of i do want to point out the uh there are some people who are upset with the new origin story of them not being like actual ninjas and learning actual martial arts they just learned it from a tape I don't, I don't. I don't have a problem with that. Well, I'm of two minds on that, right? Like one part of me is like, I mean, I kind of like the new origin. It's fine. I, I have no issue where I'm like, oh, yeah. But the one thing that I I do think could have been better balanced is I do think there's a lot of comedy and there's not a lot of serious moments. And I feel like, to me, and this is in terms of like training montage or well whatever, that yeah. and like when you think of like the old turtles stuff, it was like they're very goofy and funny, but when they need to get serious, they can be kind of type thing. Yeah. And I feel like in this movie, they never really have to fully turn off the comedy, which is for better or for worse. It's not really a, a, a complaint. Yeah. It's more of a, just a, an, an observation a of like the old turtles had like, we're serious. We're goofy. We're, you know, and they can mm-hmm. go back and forth. They were serious martial artists. They trained their mind. They could like yeah. focus up when they needed lock to it down. Yeah. Yeah. And this one, I feel like they're just a bunch of kids mm-hmm. out there, you know, wild and out and it's fine. It's a different energy. It just, I, I do kind of miss the ability to be like, oh, they are have those trained moments. martial artists. They can like, you know, get mm-hmm. serious if they need to. Yeah, no, I, I can, I can definitely see, like agree with that to a right. certain extent. Cause like, and that's kind of the thing is like, whenever we have these reboots, you know, you're going to obviously have the, the, the different takes that mm-hmm. like the director, the writers, whatever they all want to go. Yeah. Well, or we and, see Spider-Man's origin for the 50th time. You well, never know. Yeah. But yeah. well, I think the big thing though is, is that like, as we get older, People are going to have different um, requirements at, for an audience. Yeah, sure. If, if or for viewers or whatever Hashtag you want to call not it. Not my reboot. Yeah, like and, <laughs> you, know, so, you know, sometimes you know it's just going to be a different vibe. It is. Yeah. I mean, I will say, you know, on some levels, watching them be like, oh, we learn from like you know, borderline infomercials, you know, belt, yeah. belt factory style <laughs> right. videos. It's like that's a really good way to just get absolutely decked in an alley. Yeah. Um, you yeah. Have well, luckily they're, they're, they're mutants and they but have they're super, also, yeah, super. They're mutants. They're yeah. very, they're much stronger and they yeah. can pull this off and make it actually work. Whereas, yeah, yeah don't, don't try this at home kids, you know, yeah. what kind of thing. I, or do just don't sue us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's, uh, let's talk some entertainment. Sure. Yeah. Favorite scene. Ooh. Put you on the spot. I got mm. mine. I'll go ahead and give you mine. Go ahead. The interrogation montage of all the different oh. criminal elements. That was great. I Wait, didn't bring one? it up. 
So when they were going around, like the different each turtle like confronted oh, each yeah, different yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. crime lord underground boss or whatever. And they're all referring to everybody all else. Referring to each one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh so I didn't bring up a spectacle, but that whole sequence that was, was very good. Per- like again, when we're talking about like blocking out a sequence, making it to where you know what's happening, but they're also like snapping from location to location. That was really well done. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. That was a lot of fun. I really liked the the brawl in the chop shop. Yep. Just yeah. because, like, one, it was blocked out really well, but you also got um, a good idea of, like, the type of action and the type of, like, competency level of the turtles. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because, like... Because you haven't the, seen it really yeah, at you this point. Yeah, you haven't seen it up to that point. Besides them just like, you know, chopping watermelons in half with swords, which is fine. Yeah, and also the stealing and balancing, you know, oranges on a on the bow staff. Yeah. Or but yeah. But like in that kind of stuff, and but then you get to this where there's actual stakes involved and yeah. they, you know, like and they kind of bumble their way through it initially and then they realize they're like, Oh, we're really good at we're this. We're actually good at this. Yeah. Because like this is it's, their it's, first it's time working. <laughs> going into it besides like fighting each other. Now they're like, oh, we're actually, like, talented at this. We can actually, like, do something. And yeah. I, I like that kind of whole little, like, mini character arc within the fight. Within which the was, fight. Yeah. was really, really fun. They, you know, they had, like, the Go Ninja Go um, from Vanilla Ice in there, <laughs> yeah. which, was, which was fun. And, yeah. like, in the movie, I was, uh, that was the Leo pointing me. I was like, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I was like, oh. Ninja. Ninja. Rap. Yeah. Um, mine definitely got to be the splinter fight at the end that culminates in the milking machine joke. Like yes. for me, that, <laughs> that, whole, that sequence. whole sequence is like great action, great choreography, very Jackie Chan esque, and then Jackie Chan pulling off one just some of the best comedic delivery with like, wait a minute, what kind of machine is this? <laughs> is this some kind of milking machine? Boys, like, yeah. Are they milking you? <laughs> no, well, no, 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 no. And then you go out one time and then you yeah. get caught. Now they're milking you. Because <laughs> it's also it's the culmination of all of his what you thought was they, unfounded they fears. Have been from yeah. Lining this up for the whole film. Yeah. And when it pays off, it pays off. I really yeah. do like that fight because they really took Jackie Chan's martial arts style from his old Chinese films yeah. and actually just embodied it into Splinter, which was a lot of fun because right. he did use a lot of the environmental stuff yes. and he he always kind of started below and then whenever they kept adding in more guys and more guys he had to keep escalating to different weapons or you know defense yeah. techniques or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. which was really cool because that's what he does in his movies yeah. so yeah. I thought that was a really good nod to you know obviously the voice actor playing him well yeah. and also for again what I saw you know some people be critical of the film with oh you know they made you know Splinter and old doofus or whatever like sure for the first bit you know from a teenager's perspective he kicks some butt right (laughs) that's the thing is then they turn it around and he actually has his own arc yeah he gets his own payoff with right that fight yeah uh and also of course you know the superfly sequence as well at the uh the the random boat off (laughs) stat literally no one ever goes to yeah like much graffiti that thing would be covered in if you oh, left that yeah. sits there. Yeah. But yeah, you know, like uh, there are some, obviously, you know, they, there's a world that, that has mutants in it. So like, there's going to be some liberties of like, well, they have to have a place that they can like, well, or we just oh, accept sure. the fact yeah. that Superfly yeah. has been killing a lot of children. <laughs> the, the, I mean, the vagrancy rate of, of Staten Island has been going down yeah. steadily for a while. Call them A, call them B. You know? So yeah. I really like, and this is more of just a general trope, and this happens in like, you know, Ghostbusters mm-hmm. and anything else. I really love the trope of New York's, New Yorkians. New Yorkians. New Yorkers. New Yorkers. New Yorkers. New Yorkians. New Yorkians. <laughs> New Yorkians Andrew? Yorkers. Yorkers. Hey, I'm walking here. <laughs> I love I love that trope of like the whole city coming together. Oh yeah. And, and like, oh, dude, I love it too. Like in the Spider Man movie. Hey, Spider Man! That yeah. guy with the crane on like number three hits the yeah. Like anytime someone like the city, like they they, they, they all like rally well, behind it's, their it's heroes. Always like the yeah. you get the blue collar like street worker with his vest and his hard hat mm-hmm. on shows up. There's always one you know, like you have have like the whole cross section, right? Yeah, yeah. Which and I, I, I think that's just a great trope. Um, probably one of my favorites in, um, I think Spider Man Two. I think was that the oh yeah, with yeah, the train, with the train uh-huh. and yeah. you know they're like he's just a kid, he's just a kid. Oh, they oh, carry man. him out in the music. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nickelback playing. I need a hero. I don't oh, think that was playing no. at all in the movie. Stop. That was the vindicate. That it was wasn't a your head. confessional. Oh god. <laughs> But yeah, oh, no, I, I I love this movie. It was a lot of fun. I, I had a lot of fun with it, yeah. Yeah, I was very entertained. I'm, I'm looking forward to a sequel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll get Shredder. 
Yeah, we will get Shredder. I'm, I'm looking forward to some Shredder yeah. action. And yeah. I hope that they, like, if they come out with the TV show first, mm-hmm. that it's either side stories or if it's, it's not, not required it's not a, reading. It, yeah, it's not required reading to yeah. watch the show to see the next film. Well, we could have a yeah. lot of fun with side story stuff. With We have a whole bevy of mutants, right? Mm-hmm. Which I was kind of watching. I was like, man, we're friends. I kind of really thought the mutants were going to, like, split. Oh, I'm actually, like, yeah, sorry, go on. I, I really thought we were going to get, like, like Bebop and Rocksteady, for instance, side with Superfly. Mm-hmm. And we right. have kind of, like, a family versus family fight. Because right. now at the end of the film, I was like, you know, like, we have a whole, they have a whole, like, roster of, of villains here that, like, just don't exist anymore in this. They're just friends. Well, I was going to well, say, they, they took their entire list of baddies and they just shrunk it to just Shredder in the foot because, like, oh, they're crank, friends with I mean, all crank one crank. Crank be yeah. out there. There's a couple of those. Well, um, there's so no like, I mean, like, there's still definitely a storyline somewhere some other, yeah. where they can Cracky get, God. they can basically, you know, cre- in, introduce some mutagen that basically yeah. makes them go berserk or they get oh, mind, oh, you're gonna you know. Do, you're going to do the, like, the Zootopia thing where they get hit with the, it's possible. the dark gun and they yeah. go berserk? Yeah. Maybe I will. But I actually, <laughs> I actually kind of like that, like, because, you know, knowing, you know, turtles in general, you get mm-hmm. to see a lot of the, like, you know, the bad guys. Yeah. And you're, I was kind of glad that all of them weren't bad guys. Well, and yeah. Like, when you go back to, like, the, the, the original, like, the classic creation of Bebop and Rocksteady, n- neither of these people really wanted to be, like, evil. Yeah. They were just kind of in the wrong place at the wrong time, you know? Evil. Like, evil. <laughs> well, was like, that, like, neither of these guys woke up and like, I'm going to commit evil today, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. Like petty theft or whatever, in the wrong place, wrong time. Yeah. Now you're just a bad guy for life. Bad guy for life. <laughs> bad boys, bad boys. What you oh, no. <laughs> okay, well, it sounds like we're kind of uh, kind of winding down here. Yep. yep. But uh, before we go, we got to promote that Patreon. For just $1 right is. now. $1. It's a special. The same sub- price you can pay every month is also the special for this month. <laughs> One dollar. <laughs> you can support the show right now by yep. one by paying us one dollar a month. And what that does is one, it keeps the lights on, pays server costs, and helps us just buy equipment and make sure that our equipment works. However, what you get out of the deal is you get a whole slew of bonus episodes once per month guaranteed. And all the stuff that's already come out beforehand, we have commentaries that you can go and listen to uh, where, you know, we, it's kind of Mystery Science Theater 3000. It's like we're and, on the couch yeah. with you watching yes. the movie. Yeah. Um, whether that's a good or bad thing, I don't know. You decide on that one. <laughs> but uh, Pay a dollar, you'll find out. Pay yeah. a dollar, you'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want to preview one of our commentaries, we have the commentary for The Phantom Menace up on the main feed. It is on the main feed, So yes. you, you can check it out. You sync it up with your movie. Listen to it. And if you like what you hear, $1. Just one dollar. Yeah. And you know, if you support us on Patreon, your support means the world. We literally couldn't do this show without it. But if you don't have one dollar a month to spare, you can help us by sharing our show with someone else. You can leave us a review on your favorite podcast service. You can follow us on social. There's so many ways you can support the show for free. I want to hear about your favorite turtle toy growing up. Or or turtle nostalgia. It doesn't even have to be a toy. I want to hear about I don't care about that. It can even just be about your pet turtle. It don't even have to be a ninja or mutant. Just oh, man, let's get let's get the turtle fact, man. I would love there, to have a pet about tortoise. Turtles. Let's get some. Yeah, they live longer than you, though. Yeah, they really do. That's a point. commitment, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like getting a parrot lives forever. Yeah. If you got one when you were one years old, it still might outlive you. It probably will. <laughs> yeah. With your <laughs> reckless lifestyle, <laughs> I've seen how you eat. <laughs> okay. On that note, that is all the time we have for this episode. Until next time, I'm Stephen. I'm Andrew, and I'm Ryan. And every spoiler was intended. <laughs>